Okay, so we have another demo disc here. This one is the official US PlayStation magazine. I believe this is from issue eight. Now, I did not have a subscription to this magazine for quite a few years. Now, I'm not quite sure I can explain why. I ended up buying them at the Dand. Now, that was uh, an expense buying this magazine because the price tended to be high in comparison to the subscription fee. But I tried getting a subscription several times, but it just kept not happening. I guess it would get lost in the mail, the subscription card or whatever. But I tried multiple times. And it just uh, I know I really did get a subscription, but it took a couple of years. But anyway, I believe this is the first issue of the magazine I had owned. It was the, er it was the earliest disc I was able to find, is what I'm saying. And maybe, maybe I had one before this, but I feel like this was the first issue that I had. And it has... A few games on it. Gex, enter the gecko. Gex was a Crystal Dynamics character. I guess Crystal Dynamics is best known nowadays for doing the Tomb Raider games, which they took over uh, due to Square Enix owning the IP and Crystal Dynamics nowadays. Oh man, this game is weird. The camera is all sorts of funky. I'm not sure how to rotate it. <laughs> A fucking monster. <laughs> Gex was like a TV obsessed character. I guess a lot of the uh, the comments he's making are like cultural references to TV shows. Although honestly, I'm not <laughs> recognizing them. Step into the light. Oh, there's light. Ah! Fuck! <laughs> ah, okay. Oh, it's not following me in here. Oh, I can rotate the camera with the shoulder buttons. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit awkward, though. Oh, shit. Okay, was I supposed to go here? Ha! Ah, killed him. Oh! Started me back at the beginning. Why? <laughs> Alright. I, I have no idea what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> That's the problem with cultural references being used in, especially in comedy, is it tends to date the work pretty substantially. What? Oh, it was like an extra life. <laughs> yeah, anything that you, you rely too heavily on cultural references to with will... It will run itself through the... Uh, will date itself pretty quickly because as soon as anybody as soon as whatever that cultural reference is becomes old the work that you're creating will start to feel old and it's especially bad if you reach a point where people don't even know what the hell you're talking about like in this case I remember I went to a concert ah oh, damn I died I went to a concert right around the time that uh, Charlie Sheen was going through one of his weird coked out crazy fests talking about tiger blood and shit like that and I remember the guy on stage said is everybody ready to get hooked up on some Charlie Sheen or something along those lines and <laughs> I mean it was a concert so it wasn't like something anybody would watch multiple times no shit no uh. but it occurred to me like that is at the time like that Sure it's, sure, it's topical now, but it's not something that anybody will even understand in a few years. Like, who remembers that Charlie Sheen talked about himself like he was a drug? I don't know. Apparently I did. But <laughs> A lot of the 
like the scary movies, the by that I mean like the Wayne's Brothers parody movies, relied on cultural references of like recent horror movies or commercials or anything like that. Like one of them was based on the movie, uh, what was that movie called? S uh, not Scream. Yeah, Scream. And then that movie ages, and then, like, who cares? Or But then they have, like, in the second one, it seemed to have most been mostly... The second scary movie seemed to have mostly been based around the... Um, Haunting, I think the movie was called, which was an adaption of the book The Haunting of Hill House. But the movie just sort of fell into obscurity after release. It may have been a big release at the time, but it fell into obscurity not long after, after it was released. So the entire movie seems like a weird... Oh, shit. It seems like just a strange time capsule from an era where this movie was popular for a short period of time and now nobody really remembers it or nobody cares. There's a toilet, an overflow toilet. <laughs> what was the... I think it especially got bad after the Wayans Brothers. <sighs> okay. <laughs> after the Wayans Brothers left that, and they did like um, what was the what was the third one about? The movie Signs, the Shyamalan movie. But there was what was like some. Never mind. I'm talking about the movie Scary Movie too much. But anyway, Gex. <laughs> Overly reliant on cultural references. Uh, I guess everything's... I guess the different levels in this game, I don't know. The Imperial fleet would never follow us into a floating furniture field. Okay, that's Star Wars there. Got that one at least. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Camera is fighting me too much. Okay, you know what? I'm done with this. I remember this now, though. You had these different themes that the discs had. Well, Noah! You had these different themes. And it would be... And then, they, for a few issues, they would use the same video and same menus and all that kind of stuff, and they'd switch to something else. Klonoa. I never owned this game, but I did play this demo a bunch of times. It's a side-scrolling platformer. During an era where side-scrolling platforms were not the shit anybody cared about. Although I think it did manage, in a way, to stand out. It does kind of feel like a side-scrolling platform from that era, though, because... Oh, okay. It's it's like a 2D slash 3D game where your character is a 2D sprite and the environments are all 3D. And the camera is a little bit too close to the character, I feel. Ah! Hey, there we go. Ah, shit. Fell off. It's a little goofy. A little silly, a little kitty. And that's a little bit strange that this ended up being a fairly popular game considering that the PlayStation was sort of, uh, its bread and butter was the so-called more mature audience than what you'd see out of, like, Nintendo. But here we go, this beloved game from this era is this crazy kitty crap. <laughs> Yeah, this isn't bad. Let's see if I can skip over all this crap. Oh, wrong way. I'm not interested in the story or anything. The 
The music is irritating as shit, though. I guess the... The main gimmick of this is this weird, uh... Grabbing things, and then throwing them, and then throwing them underneath you in order to... Get a kind of, like, a boost for your jump. There was this big thing, I guess it was kind of a shame that there was an era where you had... Is that the end of the demo? Uh, maybe not. Now lording, huh? There was an era, unfortunately, where kind of uh, side-scrolling platformers were kind of out of... Uh, not trendy anymore. Because we had moved on from, like, the SNES and Genesis era. Where the side-scrolling platforms were a majority of the games. Whoops, died. And then you move on to the PlayStation, Saturn, N64. Where suddenly you have... It becomes practical to do 3D platformers and 3D whatevers. And that's where everything started to go and... Anything that was going and doing the side-scrolling platformer was just, that's doing old stuff. Nobody wants old stuff. So, you kind of had this entire genre of games which went and just sort of hung around and didn't really evolve much during that era. Because there weren't enough... Oh, minecart. Didn't evolve much and didn't do much to change or advance or something for a number of years. I guess it probably wasn't until, like, the birth of the retro-style game with, like, the 360 and the PS3 with their online markets. They started to see this side-scrolling game sort of come back into fashion. And you could see the genre start to move forward again. So it was like, okay, let's say the PlayStation launched in 95. And that's when everybody moved away. 95 until... 05, 06, 07 or so. Whenever it was, we started to see these games... Can't make that jump. Started to see these games come back in the fashion. Ten years or so, you had... How do I do this? <laughs> eh, fuck it. Ten years. This entire genre just languished. And it makes me wonder where everything would be if that didn't really happen. Like, would we have gotten... ...platformers that were the quality of, like, Axiom Verge... ...more often, or... ...Rogue Legacy, or something like that... ...had this genre been allowed to really flourish back in that time, during that time. But I guess, you know, the new and shiny is kind of the thing that really drives everything forward. The new technologies, new advancements, all that kind of stuff. So you can't really blame developers for wanting to push the new and shiny, the new technologies, the gimmicky things that are... Okay, I think I'm supposed to go this way. Wow, that soundtrack just reset hard. Weird. You little bitch. <laughs> there we go. Who made this game? Clearly, like a Japanese thing. Is that a loading screen?
Boss battle, I guess. <laughs> what is that supposed to be? It's actually a uh, polygonal character. It's not like Klonoa, or I guess that's the name of the main character. Oh, I died. It's not like the Klonoa or any of the other uh, characters that are on screen there. It's actually a 3D object. Oh, I thought I had it there. I think I have to hit it from behind. There we go. Oh, it's got a life bar. I didn't see that. Oh, and invincibility frames. Hey, like that shit. What is up with this thing? See, now this is definitely a style of boss that wouldn't have been possible in the previous generation. This 3D environment is kind of important to the mechanics of this boss fight. It's not just, just a graphical gimmick being used for the sake of this. It actually seems like it's important, so this was an advancement that they couldn't really get away with before. Ah, shit. Took a hit. Gotcha! Oh, it's over. Alright, what do we got next? Einhander! Holy sh... One thing you can say about the PlayStation 1 was it was definitely an era of experimentation. This was not a, uh... This is definitely not the kind of game I would expect to have come out of Squaresoft, especially in the era. Nowadays, Squaresoft makes all sorts of stuff. But, uh, like an R-type style game, side-scrolling uh, shooter, this is definitely something that was different. Again, it's another game that I never actually bought, but it was one that I had played this demo over and over again. I mean... It's, it's, it just immediately comes back to me because the style of gameplay, fairly simplistic, but it's uh, so, so pick up and play. It's another popular game in the era, although I guess the kind of popularity that doesn't warrant a uh, sequel or any kind of like long term, long term, uh, fandom, so I doubt we're going to ever see another Einhander. I like this kind of Blade Runner aesthetic. Blade Runner, or I guess you could maybe say uh, Fifth Element might have been more topical at the time. Riot, huh? Ho! Oh, that's awesome. Ah, gonna take a hit. This uh, cannon is probably the better gun. I'm gonna stick with that. Is that a boss battle? Yep, oh, ran out of bullets. <laughs> Oops, took a hit. <laughs> they started off a little bit before the boss battle, 
to give me time to, uh, I guess, time to choose a new weapon. Which is pretty cool. It's a, uh, nice consideration. Rather than just throwing me right back into the boss battle. Speaking German? Haha! -ha. Oh shit! No! I don't like this. <laughs> oh, did I get it? <laughs> I, I died off screen. <laughs> Oh, okay, so that wasn't the boss. Okay, do I have the boss battle now? Oh, is that the boss? Oh, what the hell? Really? Last life. That died a little too easy. Stay down! I didn't actually hit it. <laughs> and I'm dead. Dead or alive? Now, oh, this is a video. Dead or alive? I don't know. It's, I guess it's not a terrible fighting game. I never played the original one. Because it's a video and I never bought it. I did play Dead or Alive 2. And... 5? Five? 5, I think. Whatever the one for like the... That came out on the PS3. Played that one. But it's, it's kind of... I mean, it's pretty clear what they're trying to do. Although, in this first one, maybe maybe they weren't so committed to that. Considering I'm looking at nothing but the male characters. Just comes across as a bit silly. Is that the entire video? You're not going to show any gameplay. Really, you're not going to show any gameplay. At all. Nothing. No gameplay. MLB 99. Another video. Who was making the MLB games back then? Sony. Sony was doing it back then, too. They're still doing it. So the, the Major League Baseball games have been exclusive to Sony consoles for all these years. It's ridiculous, huh? It was definitely a change, like, not just in the entire generation, really, in terms of gameplay styles and the way that games looked and all that kind of stuff. Because in the beginning, I remember the baseball games in the beginning of the PlayStation era. On the PlayStation, and they were... More or less, this came across like things that could have been done on the Super Nintendo because the environment was just like a baseball diamond is a flat, flat environment, and the characters in the early games were were all uh, 2D sprites. It wasn't until later on that you started to see like with MLB 99 and football games like like say NFL Blitz and stuff, which started for making the characters 3D models. And that, that was a pretty big change. Although I wasn't really big into the MLB games. I did notice that they ended up being quite a bit different later on in the generation. Gran Turismo, another video. Damn it. 
A sim racer? I'm not really that into sim racers. I don't like having to hit the brake as I take turns. But Gran Turismo was one of the big releases for the PlayStation 1. Gran Turismo 2 was a bigger release. In fact, all the Gran Turismos always seem to be a big deal whenever they eventually land. They do take forever, though. This definitely wowed people in terms of graphics. Especially the the uh, replays, which always seem to look better than the actual like gameplay as you were playing it. Maybe they put like some extra graphical flourish or detail into it once you're not actually like having AI control or anything like that, and it's just doing a replay. Gran Turismo was always though a graphical powerhouse in whatever era it happened to have been in. Is there a Gran Turismo game coming out for the PS5? I, I feel like one was announced, but I don't remember it. Another one of the other gimmicks they had for this was Gran Turismo was one of the early games that had like a huge car roster. It was something like 100 cars or 150 cars or whatever in the first game. Whereas most racing games in that era had maybe like a dozen or so. And they were officially like licensed. All of these are real cars. So it was like you want to drive a... If you want to drive a Dodge Viper, you can drive a Dodge Viper in this. And, or a Chevy Corvette or whatever. Whereas most other games were like... They just random sports car looking things so that was a big deal it's also like Castrol it's actually licensed <laughs> 1998 huh pretty sure this disc came out in 97 oh that's it okay so there were three demos and three videos I remember some of the discs had more videos and demos, and that was always a disappointment. But anyway, this is OPM, official US PlayStation Magazine demo disc, issue number eight. Stuck around for all this, thanks for watching, and goodbye. Maybe I'll have more of these in the future, this is always fun for me.